What's up, YouTube? Sharman Xsoft here coming at you guys with a brand new Friday the 13th the game video. And today, we're going to be covering the virtual cabin once again, but we're going to be bringing you the brand new update, and that is the conservatory update. Now, before we go ahead and show you the conservatory, I just want to re-show you this not chart here. If you guys are unfamiliar how to find any of those unlocks, then please be sure to go ahead and check out my other cabin videos, as I will show you step by step how to find them all. So let's go ahead and check out this conservatory, shall we? BAM! Check this thing out, man. Your first thing you hear when you open that door is all of the wind. Now, what's really cool about this conservatory is that it's not like any other conservatory you would ever hear of. Conservatories are usually kind of like a room, almost like a greenhouse or so, such, like built into a house. We're actually outside of the cabin. That's awesome. I mean, look, we got the, the, the stars in the sky. Look, we even have the moon. Look at the rays of light coming off of the moon. The guys at Gunbeat and Ilphonic have really outdone themselves with this cabin. I am telling you, this update has really, really impressed me. And I've upgraded my uh, GPU as well. I'm now using the GTX uh, 1060 armor with the uh, 6 gigabytes and it's overclocked. So, like... It's definitely helping out bring you guys some better footage. So I hope you guys do appreciate it. All right, but look at this cabin update. I mean, look at all of the detail. This this right here is going to definitely probably be the car that we're going to use to escape, of course. You can see it's going to hold four people. But let's keep on moving. Right now, I'm just going to kind of just show you a quick little tour. Look at the sign and everything. And then I will show you the uh, actual Easter eggs and unlocks and things of that nature. Look at the little campsite, the fire. Awesome stuff right here, guys. Oh, sounds like Jason's moving out in the woods. Listen to the crickets. Can you hear that? It's so awesome. And look at the water. It's all moving and stuff. This by far is probably my most favorite cabin update they've brought to us. This is the first time we've been officially allowed to go outside. I know there has been some YouTube videos out there and some other YouTubers that have been going outside. Wow, he's out there, man. I'm telling you, he's trying to hunt us down. But, you know, what they've been doing is removing... Look, coyotes? What the... We got everything out here, guys. I'm telling you. But uh, what those guys are doing is removing, like, system files and whatnot to uh, remove the doors from the code so they can get outside. But this is the first official time that Gunmean and Ilphonic is allowing us to go outside. So that is just freaking awesome. And I am totally enjoying it. I am in complete all of this update. Look at the cemetery, guys. We have Pamela Voorhees' gravestone right here. Good stuff. Check this out. You can even, like, get up in the bushes and stuff and, like, try to hide. Wait, but maybe not that one. Hang on. There you go. See, so you can be, like, creeping. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. All right, so this first one right here, Pamela Voorhees gravestone, is our very first actual unlock for the knot chart. So as we go ahead and stare at it, it'll zoom in. And as you will see, we hear the click. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, so let's go see what marker it truly put up on that chart. Look at the moon. I can't I can't get over the effect of that moon. All right. Cruising on in, guys. As you can see, it is the very top left marker. That is our very first, well, our only actual unlock for the conservatory. So there is no more knot chart unlocks. That is currently what we have right now. And that's currently where we will stay when it comes to the knot chart unlocks until the next update. But again, like I said, but always I have more information for you guys and I will be showing you guys some more of these cool little Easter eggs and stuff. All right, so the first one right here should have been a shout out and that is my complete mess up. I apologize, I lost the information for who told it to me a couple of weeks ago. So I do apologize if you're watching, but this chair has been found and it is on Friday the 13th, part three. It's on Vera's front porch. 
you'll see that there is a bench up there. And now a lot of people are saying Freddy versus Jason, but the Freddy versus Jason one has a lot of hearts along the top rail, so that's not it. And the closest resemblance would be from Friday the 13th Part 3 on the Vera's front porch. So that's what we will say for that. And I do apologize that I don't have the person's name for the shoutouts. And uh, on top of that, guys, I'm going to be holding all shoutouts and theories until my next video on Monday. So bear with me on that one. All right. So let's move on here. Now we have the towels. The first two is this red one and the brown one. Both of these towels can be seen in Friday the 13th Part 3. They are seen in the shower scene where Andy's girlfriend is taking a shower, but that's not the only towel that we can see in that scene, actually. If we go over to the item room, you will see this blue towel that is also there. You can see we have the blue and the red towel, which is the same red towels outside, but those towels, or excuse me, the blue towel along with the red towel and the brown towel can all be seen in that exact same scene in Friday the 13th Part 3 with Andy's girlfriend taking the shower. Now, moving on, we have the uh, green and white towel, which we can find in Friday the 13th Part 1. This towel is seen in the right side where Kevin Bacon is actually trying to go ahead and get some with his girlfriend up in the cabin. Now, the red chair is the one thing that I have not been able to find. So that one will be on you guys. I'm also going to be searching for it as well, but we have not been able to locate the red chair. Now, this lamp, we've already discussed this before in the last update. That is Friday the 13th, part six. You can tell by the uh, bend in it. Now, the car itself is the tough one. Now, I really don't think the car is a true reference to, well, I guess I could say it's a reference to a car, and that would be in Friday the 13th, part six as well, but that was more of a punch buggy. But uh, the reason I say that the reference is there is because of this American Express card. As you can see when we zoom in on it, it says a Death Express, all 13s with a Jason mask in the middle. That doesn't actually unlock nothing, but it is a zoomable item, so it is pretty neat. But the, the credit card is a clear reference from a Friday the 13th Part 6 where the woman tries to pay Jason off. So if you put the card and the car together, you could say that this car might be the reference to the Part 6 car. But that car was a punch buggy, so we can't clearly just identify it like that. The um, only reason I say this could be possibly a generic, since I haven't found it yet, is because we know in the game we're going to need four seats, which this car clearly has when it has two back doors and two front doors, to escape from Jason. So that is pretty cool. But the car itself also makes sounds. Pretty neat, right? Does Jason come up? Man, I tell you what. Spooky dude. Backlights light up like that. You can see that. And the license plate is a reference as well. If you look at this, it reads N-O-B-B-S-C-O. This is kind of tricky. You kind of have to know your Friday the 13th knowledge for this. But the closest thing to this would be the term, or I should say the camp name, of Nobi Nosco. Okay, and Nobi Nosco, what that is, it stands for Northern Bergen Boy Scouts of America. Okay, well, I don't really say of America, but it's the Northern Bergen Boy Scouts. Now, what it is, is the original Camp Crystal Lake is property, is privately owned, basically, by the Boy Scouts of America up there in the northwest section of New Jersey. So that camp is called Nobi Nosco. Okay, so that license plate, as you can see, as the no BB Sco would be a reference to the name No Be No Sco for the camp of the original Crystal Lake location. So you can kind of see, you can kind of put it all together. It's, I know it's a little bit tough to explain. I'll actually be putting a link to their website if you guys want to check it out. But it is pretty cool. They even have their own little gift shop for you. They haven't really done any tours in forever, but it is a pretty neat little fun fact for you guys. Man, Jason is just trying to creep up on us, isn't he? All right. Next, we have the Crystal Lake sign right here. And this can be clearly identified in Friday the 13th Part 1, along with the trespassing signs. They're actually on that sign. You can see them on the side post of the sign in Friday the 13th Part 1. I was thinking for a second that they might be from Part 2 when they're trying to go into the camp, but it's not. That's a metal sign, and those trespassing signs were clearly on those posts in Friday the 13th Part 1. Now, the next section we have here is the campsite. As you can see, we have those red chairs again. I cannot clearly identify where these are from. I'm still on the look for them. That is the only item I have not been able to find, but uh, we are still on the look for that. So if you guys do find it, then please be sure to either tweet me or share it on um, 
my YouTube channel, and I'll be sure to shout you guys out, whoever the first one is to find it. The picnic table here, I would say, would be from Friday the 13th, part two, as there is uh, quite a bit of scenes, actually, with picnic tables where they're sitting in front of the, um, the camp where they're having their little briefing, and there is a legitimate picnic scene in Friday the 13th, part two, as you can see right here. So that's why I will say this picnic table will be from Friday the 13th, part two. All right, moving on right here, we have the tent. This tent is actually Roy's tent from Friday the 13th Part 4, one of my most favorite Friday the 13th movies. Uh, you can see it clearly is the tent. It has the yellow dome top and whatnot. I know a lot of people are going to try to throw me out there that it's going to be from Friday the 13th, the, the 2009 reboot, but it is definitely not. I've definitely looked into that, guys. And we also have the pooper here. Or the outhouse now this is really cool okay the outhouse if you guys are unfamiliar with this this is from friday the 13th part three this is outside the higgins haven house you can clearly see like the little wood marks around it and whatnot around the moon and everything clearly identifying it and then when you go ahead and open it oh oh my god they killed kenny <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw in my own little South Park reference there. It's Kenny Rydell. We know this is the head counselor right here. And as you can see, he's bl brutally murdered right here. So pretty awesome that we've officially been able to see a murder victim, like she used to say right here. I mean, that's just freaking really cool. I, I got You got to love it. It looks awesome. Good effects, good sound effects. And right here, we have writing on the door that says he's killing me now if you don't know what this is a reference to this is a reference to friday the 13th part 4 as well where rob has been killed by a garden tool in the basement by jason Voorhees. it's almost like the most funniest kill ever because the entire time while rob's getting stabbed he's yelling out he's killing me he's killing me he's killing me and it's like why are you gonna yell that when someone's killing you like wouldn't you be like screaming in pain but you know he's making out full sentences of he's killing me so friday the 13th part four would be the the, the words back here for um rob saying he's killing me along with that tent as we said that is also rob's tent from friday the 13th part four so pretty cool stuff all right now we're going to go ahead and move over to the cemetery. Now a lot of people are just going to say pretty clean, cut and dry cemetery. You know, Pamela Voorhees was buried there, but there is identifying features from multiple different movies here. So in the cemetery, the first thing we're going to go talk about is the actual archway. The archway, you will see this in Friday the 13th Part 1. That one is the pretty obvious thing. And then the next thing would be these taller headstones. These taller headstones you won't find in the cemeteries at all until you get to Friday the 13th Part 6, where Jason's actually buried. That's where you're going to find the taller headstones. Now, the last headstone, the Pamela headstone, you will find in Friday the 13th Part 4, as you can see in this scene right here. So, as you can see, we have pretty much covered every little thing out here in this uh, entire environment for the conservatory. The only thing, like I said, we are missing for the outside would be the red chair. So, if you guys know where the red chair is, please be sure to let me know as I will be sure to shout you guys out in my next video that I will be having coming out Monday, which will cover all of the new cool things like the uh, other unlocks that we excuse me not unlocks all of the other easter eggs that we missed and you guys have been finding along with some really cool awesome theories you guys have been coming up with so i'm really enjoying all of the theories i have some evidence to even back up one that could potentially be possible so you guys don't want to miss that video i'll be having coming out monday because it's going to be pretty freaking cool so the chair right here we are still missing and i'm going to take you for a quick walk around the cabin to let you guys know what else we're missing because if you guys want to you can go ahead and take the weekend to figure out what you can find out and maybe possibly earn yourselves a shout out because i'll be watching the marathons myself as well as i have all the movies and i plan to sit through them all again and again and again because they're just so awesome all right so the red chairs outside we are definitely missing i've already said now this cart over here in the counselor's room this blue cart I'm still missing. Now, I have found the sleeping bag, so don't worry about that. But this blue cart, as you can see, has wheels on it, and I'm definitely missing it. Somebody has messaged me before telling me they found it, but they've never messaged me back telling me where it is. So it's still up for grabs, guys. We're looking for the blue cart with wheels. The next thing we're looking for is this floor lamp over here. 
we are this guy is still at large make sure you guys are definitely paying attention to it i know there's a lot of floor lamps that look like this most of which have what look like candle stick lamp bulbs kind of coming from underneath of it so as you can see we don't have those types of bulbs underneath it so make sure you guys are clearly paying attention to those kinds of things because we want to try to find the right one the most closest one that looks like it's the identical match the next thing would be this blue and white towel is still at large we have not been able to find it so that one is still killing me guys it's like tempting it's like taunting me it's like find me find me find me still can't find it all right the next one would be the police car now with the police car the big thing to take note of is you can see it has a blue stripe and a white body and the top lamps for the police car it's not like a bar that goes across their actual two circle dome pieces these are the details that i'm trying to pay attention to to match to find the right police car that they're using as their reference all right uh the next thing on the list here that i wrote down would be the cb radio we are still looking for the cb radio which you can turn on by the way and you guys should already know that but we have not clearly identified where the cb radio has been coming from on top of that the bathroom cabinets here we're still looking for which movies the bathroom cabinets are in they actually should be pretty easy to find i just haven't looked hard enough for them as i've been looking for other things at different times the uh, other two items would be these two bottom outside lights. Now, we already mentioned that the tall light on the left here, the, the you know, we still need to find that, but we're also looking for those two outside lights, the black ones, the square one and the one with the glass bulb over it. Those two lights we are still looking for as well, along with the green generator. All right. The next thing that we are looking for is also this clothing screen that looks very similar to the one that is in Friday the 13th part three in the Chris in the Chris Higgins room, but hers has all the Oriental design on it and whatnot. So if we go through all of the movies and we cannot find any other clothing screen, then we were gonna have to say that it would be the reference from part three. But for now, I refuse to give up because I think it could be out there. So make sure you guys are looking for that one as well. Now, if you've seen, you know, I haven't said anything about the red sleeping bag or any of the other items like the 13 and the picture frames and whatnot because we've already found them i haven't announced where they are yet so make sure you guys come back and check out the new video that will be coming out on monday explaining all of these awesome easter eggs that you guys have found giving you guys a lot of different shout outs along with some more really cool information and theories so i hope you guys have enjoyed the video and i hope it has helped you out and if it has please feel free to go ahead and slap that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to join the charminati today and you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and comment below and follow me on twitter to stay up to date with all my youtube videos i'm charmin xoft and as always thanks for watching and y'all come back now you hear